up guys EJ here back with another video and today it's gonna be my weekly movie review roundup uh, episode 10 so yeah I've got uh, six uh, movies to talk to you about this week uh, again sorry for the uh, delay but yesterday was I was very busy with uh, my birthday and the Super Bowl of course uh, so I didn't get to make uh, this video yesterday so yeah, what six movies this past week? Uh, starting off on uh, Monday, February first, I watched <laughs> uh, Magic Mike Double uh, XL, uh, the sequel, of course, to Magic Mike, um, directed by Gregory Jacobs, uh, starring Channing Tatum. Of course, he plays Mike. Um, yeah, three years removed from uh, he's quit the uh, male stripping game. And he's running his own, uh, his own like furniture business, if you like. Um, just trying to struggle out, a, um, make out a living. And then he gets uh, invited to a party by some of his old stripping buddies, and they're gonna go on one final blowout uh, ride up to uh, Myrtle Beach uh, to take part in some show competition or whatever. Um, yeah. It was it was really terrible. This is one of the worst movies I've seen this from 2015. Now, obviously, Magic Mike is not really my demographic as far as male stripping. Uh, it's not really a subject <laughs> that I'm interested in or a film that I'm really want to watch. But I did see the first Magic Mike, and at least that film had something about it, and it was really about male stripping. This film is just a stupid, silly road trip movie with a bunch of horrible performances. Um, I can understand why Woody Harrelson stayed clear away from the sequel because um, he was good in, in the first Magic Mike. He really sort of sold that movie and Ch Channing Tatum was good in that film as well. I didn't love it because again it's not my cup of tea but at least that film was about male strippers. This film was just stupid. Um, so yeah Channing Tatum joins up with his old buddies. Um, one of them is played by uh, Kevin Nash, uh, the former wrestler, um, one is played by uh, uh, Gabriel uh, Iglesias, um, uh, Mr. Fluffy or whatever his name is, um, yeah he's a comedian, uh, he's not a stripper, he's just the one driving uh, the bus on this uh, road trip, um, yeah poor what's her name, Amber Heard is in the movie as well. And uh, the final performances at the end aren't even that really interesting as well. They're not, they're not spectacular. Um, the only real genuine moment I thought in the whole movie uh, was in the beginning where he's, where he's at his home um, and he's late at night sort of working on his workshop and this song comes on and he just sort of does his own routine. Like he's moving around, bouncing around off the tables and the walls. Uh, sort of doing the moves that Channing Tatum does in the two movies uh, and he just does it for the joy of it and I thought that was the only sort of real poignant moment in the film but otherwise Magic Mike double uh, XL I mean, if, if you love male strippers it's probably your thing but it's definitely not mine and I thought it was quite terrible to be honest so yeah, I just realized I forgot to give you my rating for Magic Mike Double uh, XL, and my rating was four out of ten, uh, one of the worst films of the year. Okay, moving on to uh, February second, uh, Tuesday, I watched uh, the Last Winch, uh, Witch Hunter, um, uh, directed by Breck Eisner, and of course uh, starring uh, Vin Diesel. Yeah, the film starts out in sort of. Uh, uh, sort of the Dark Ages and uh, Vin Diesel plays a uh, part of a band of hunters who go looking for uh, uh, the Witch Queen who's uh, holed up in her lair in this tree and they're responsible for the Black Plague and wiping out um, Vin Diesel's family and whatever so they go in there he kills the witch uh, but in the process of doing that she curses him uh, for uh, curses him with Im immortality uh, to become a, uh, a witch hunter for, for the rest of his life and then of course we catch up with him in uh, present day 
Now, it's kind of a cool movie, but uh, it's like a lot of similar films that we've seen like it in, in recent years, like Hansel and Gretel, uh, Witch Hunters, um, stuff like, I don't know, Abraham, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, I, Frankenstein, it's all in that same kind of vein, um, going back even further to films like Van Helsing and sort of a touch of the Underworld movies. Um, so yeah, it's not not really that great. And the whole like why I described that opening is the whole premise of the movie is kind of weird to me. Why would this witch curse this guy who's killing her to be to be immortal so he can slay witches for the rest of the time? It made no sense to me at all. But anyway, we flash forward to uh, the present day, and Vin Diesel uh, Calder is part of the the Axe and Cross. Uh, this uh, organization or this underground um, sort of community that hunts witches and and uh, looks over witchcraft and all that kind of stuff and uh, he's handled by a, a priest uh, what they call a Dolan and that's played by Michael Caine and then early on Michael Caine gets murdered and uh, Elijah Wood plays the new Dolan who comes in uh, he's yeah. Michael Caine is Dolan 37, and Elijah Wood is Dolan 38. And Vin Diesel's first sort of mission is uh, to figure out uh, what happened to Michael Caine, how did he die, who's responsible for his death, because it becomes fairly obvious to him, even though it was looked like it was natural causes that he was killed by witchcraft uh, somehow. Um, so yeah, he starts investigating. Uh, what's been going on, there's this big badass new witch uh, who's a male uh, in town and so he goes to a, a witch bar <coughs> and he runs into uh, Rose Leslie uh, who plays Chloe. Uh, Rose Leslie, uh, the only thing I know her from is uh, Game of Thrones. She was uh, Jon Snow's love interest north of the wall, a uh, girl with the red hair. Um, yeah, she she was good on Game of Thrones, and she had a she had a good death scene in that in that show. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a fun, sort of dark action movie. Um, yeah, but the whole premise of the film it bugged me right from the beginning. <laughs> it's just something I couldn't get past. But it has a good cast. I've always liked Elijah Wood. Uh, he's pretty good in this. Uh, Vin Diesel. He's fine in the Fast and Furious movies. And it was nice seeing Rose Leslie in uh, something else. Um, but yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Had some good effects. Uh, the ending was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, uh, the last witch, uh, witch Hunter, I can't say Witch Hunter, um, I gave a 6 out of 10. Alright, so moving on. We come to uh, Wednesday, February 3rd. I watched uh, Max, uh, the uh, heroic... Uh, dog movie, if you like, uh, directed by Boaz uh, Yakin, or Boaz Yakin, sorry, uh, and written by him as well. Um, yeah, sort of an uplifting uh, heroic tale about a boy and a dog. Um, it's about a, a German Shepherd uh, called Max who is serving uh, in uh, in the war in Afghanistan, and uh, his handler, a young heroic guy, um, uh, what's his name, doesn't matter, um, he gets killed, the dog gets sort of frightened and scared and he gets sent back home, the dog gets sent back home to, to, uh, live, uh, with the, the, uh, the young soldier's family, uh, he has parents and they're played by <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church, just realizing that I said parents made me laugh. Um, and the mother is played by Lauren Graham, and they have a younger son, who's really the main focus of the movie, uh, called Justin, uh, played by Josh Wiggins. Uh, Justin's kind of a, he, he sort of resents his older brother, even though he's a hero. Um, he just sort of scoffs at him when he, early on in the film, he calls back home on Skype. And Justin is playing video games in the background while his very, uh, sort of, um, straightforward and religious mother, Lauren Graham, um, is Skyping with him and 
he's just ignoring the whole thing, playing video games. He's sort of at odds with his parents, uh, the young Justin, who's like 12, 13 years old. Um, Thomas Hayden Church used to be a war hero back in uh, Desert Storm. Um, and so he's always given Justin a hard time because uh, they lose, obviously, their, their eldest son in the war. And now this dog that's been frightened and scared and has been sent back home and they have to care for it. So Thomas Hayden Church puts Justin in charge of looking after the dog, even though Justin doesn't really want anything to do with that. He just wants to talk on the phone, hang out with his friends and play video games, uh, that kind of stuff. But obviously through time, um, he's the only one who's, who can sort of tame the dog. The dog is very skittish, barks a lot. I mean, there's lots of talk of putting the dog down. Um, but he comes around, he and Justin become good friends. And uh, yeah, he sort of, sort of takes care of Max. And uh, then, then there's a whole subplot of how how the actual son died in the war, and his one of his uh, guys from his platoon is involved uh, with weapons dealing with a Mexican <laughs> border drug cartel, and that gets all uh, kind of that's where the second half of the film really takes place, dealing with all that. Um, I I enjoyed this movie uh, mainly because. The dog I live with, uh, the, that's my roommate's dog, is my brother-in-law's dog, is a German Shepherd, uh, but it's a female, so seeing a German Shepherd male on the screen like this, I mean, the similarities are, are very, very similar. <laughs> that made no, no sense at all. Um, but it's a good, uplifting movie. Um, Thomas Hayden Church is good. He's always good. Uh, I've always liked Lauren Graham, but <laughs> this role for her just... She's so, like, goody two-shoes, proper American religious mom in this movie. It's just kind of off-putting, especially because the thing I associate her most with is Bad Santa. And she's she's such a wreck in that movie. I love her in, in Bad Santa. Um, but yeah, seeing Lauren Graham <laughs> uh, playing the, the American mom role was kind of funny. But yeah, it's a fun family uplifting tale of a young boy taming a sort of wild dog and who saves the day towards the end. I will say the last action sequence is, it kind of reminded me of a bad A-Team episode. I mean, there's lots of gunfire, there's lots of danger and peril, but nobody gets really seriously hurt or killed. Um, yeah, it kind of reminded me of that. So it kind of gets silly towards the end, uh, but it's a good uplifting movie, and if you're a dog lover, um, I've never really been a fan of dogs. I've never owned a dog. Um, the dog that I've been living with for the past um, year and a half is really low-key and very cool. She only just barks when, when we all get home, when anybody enters the door. But after that, she's really chill. She's a great dog. So uh, living with a German Shepherd, um, albeit female, is uh, my, my first real dog experience living with a dog. Um, but before that, especially when I was a kid, I've always been afraid of dogs. Um, I've had bad experience with dogs in the past. So yeah, Max, good uplifting movie. Um, don't think too hard about it. I gave it a solid 7 out of 10. Alright, moving on to uh, Thursday, February 4th. I watched uh, Dope, um, directed by uh, Rick uh, Famu Famuyaiwer. Famuyiwa, yeah, written and directed by Rick uh, Famuyiwa. Um, yeah, really good, uh, fun, interesting uh, coming-of-age film about three uh, young high schoolers who are living in uh, the Bottoms neighborhood of uh, Inglewood, California, and they're all sort of geeks. Uh, the main one's played by Malcolm. He's uh, walking the flat top, and uh, his best friends. Uh, one is one's a girl who kind of dresses like a guy. Uh, she's a lesbian and another uh, another friend um, is uh, sort of, I don't know what his ethnicity is, but it's not African American and it's definitely not white. Um, but yeah, they're living in this really bad neighborhood of 
Inglewood, uh, California, going to high school. Um, they're sort of geeky. They're into 90s uh, hip-hop culture, even though most of the, uh, the world has moved on. Uh, their high school is very dangerous. The neighborhood that they um, live in and have to travel back home to uh, after school is really bad. They run into all, all sorts of gangs and shady drug dealers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, one day they get invited to a, uh, a sort of underground party uh, for this drug dealer. And uh, inadvertently they end up with a backpack full of, uh, full of drugs. And they sort of figure an ingenious way um, to sell the drugs online. Um, whilst avoiding all the crazy characters who want the bag and the money and the drugs. Um, it's a really fun film. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's got some great music, some great references to 90s uh, hip-hop culture. Um, it's, it's a really strong movie. Um, the actors I don't really know offhand. Uh, there's nobody instantly recognizable that comes to mind. Uh, but it's a good young cast. Uh, the main lead, Mal he's, actually there are certain points where he sort of talks very softly and it's kind of hard to understand him at some points, um, but it's a strong character, he's really good. Um, yeah, so Dope was really a good surprise. Um, the tagline is, it's hard out here for a geek, um, which is kind of fitting. Uh, so yeah, Dope I really dug. Um, it was Dope. Um, that was lame. But anyway, I liked it a lot. I gave it a 8 out of 10. Okay, moving on to Friday. I watched uh, Sense and Sensibility uh, from 1995. Now, why the deviation from all the 2015 movies is because uh, it's for the uh, the movie reviewers 100. I did a full uh, review video for it on Saturday. So instead of going over it again, I'll just tell you Sense and Sensibility. Directed by Ang Lee, of course, starring uh, Emma Thompson, Alan Rickman. Uh, we, we did Alan Rickman Tribute Week. Uh, that's why I picked the movie. And uh, Kate Winslet, of course, and Hugh Grant. Really terrific film. Check out my full review in the video in the uh, link in the description down below. Alright, moving on to, uh, to Saturday. Last but not least, uh, February 6th, I watched uh, The Revenant. Um, I got some uh, gift cards for AMC Theatres uh, for Christmas <laughs> and my birthday, so I really wanted to go see this movie in the theatres, and I went to an IMAX uh, show of uh, The Revenant on Saturday afternoon. Really stoked to see this, because I'm a huge fan of Leo DiCaprio. I'm so rooting for him hard to win an Oscar this year, and he's a front runner. And this is the type of film I thought would be right up my alley. And it definitely was a um, fantastic film, uh, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inorritu, and of course starring Leo DiCaprio. He plays uh, uh, Glass, uh, Hugh Glass, um, a frontiersman in the 1820s. Um, he's on a uh, fur hunting party um, um, with a bunch of uh, uh, soldiers. Um, sort of shady characters and early on in the film their camp uh, gets attacked uh, by a Native American uh, tribe called the Wee, um, which I haven't heard of before um, and that opening scene is pretty gnarly it's one of three or four scenes in this film that sort of blew me away there's like three or four fantastic scenes in this film and the opening raid by the uh, Native American tribe on the camp is is pretty badass. Of course, it kills off most of them. They have to abandon uh, their catch, which are these pelts. Uh, they call pelts this fur stuff that they're they've been um, out hunting for, and uh, so they hop on a boat and head down the river and sort of flee with only ten or twelve guys. And Leo DiCaprio, he's their sort of guide. He's the one who's uh, leading them through the forest, through the trees. Uh, over the rivers and mountains. He's the one that they're counting on him to lead them back home uh, to this fort, uh, this small fort where they're holed up. Um, but while he's out uh, sort of on 
in the lead looking looking for the way through the woods uh, he encounters a, uh, a grizzly bear um, and the bear mall attack scene is probably the most intense and most memorable scene of any of any film you'll see this year and any scene you'll see in a couple of years it's one of the most it's it's a gnarly ass scene man the the bear attack scene is is fucking unbelievable um it's hard to watch believe me uh, but it uh, feels so real it's so raw it's it's fucking painful watching leo get mauled by this bear and basically left for dead um yeah the rest of his party comes up on him and finds him um completely ravaged by this bear uh, which he manages to kill in the process as well while he's wrestling with it uh, which is also amazing um but he's really badly hurt and uh it's just a matter of time before he dies from the cold and the and the wounds he's sustained so they try carrying him for a while but uh they run up into a mountain pass and they can't go any further so they leave him behind with his uh, son uh, who's who's um, part of a he had he had a son with a a Native American uh, woman um, I think it's the Powakwa tribe I keep I'm a little off on the uh, the names of the Indian tribes uh, the Native American tribes um, but yeah he has a young son uh, but he's also at odds with, of course, uh, Fitzgerald, uh, played by Tom Hardy, who's who's sort of angry about leaving the pelts behind. Uh, he's just he just wants to get paid. He just wants to find the quickest route to home, home, and he's not really a fan of uh, Leo's character, Glass, or his son. Uh, so he's left behind with him and uh, another younger guy. Uh, he's a recognizable actor. I forgot his name. Uh, he's, but he's been in some stuff before so they're the ones looking after Leo as he's dying and eventually Tom Hardy just like I don't want to give too much away I already have to be honest um, he basically <laughs> leaves Leo for dead um, and a lot of this film is Leo basically crawling on the ground uh, in incredible pain just trying to find a way to survive um, yeah it's a fantastic fantastic film I absolutely loved it uh, the cinematography is stunning uh, the setting and the scenery is, is just beautiful the performance by Leo is is fantastic he absolutely deserves an Oscar uh, for this role if not for many in the past uh, fantastic actor and just the pain and the just hearing him breathe is uh, throughout the movie as he's gasping for air I mean this one boy he's he's got cuts on his uh, on his throat basically and at one point he tries drinking some water uh, that he picks up from a stream and the water is like coming out of his throat and like bleeding and stuff and then so he decides to cauterize the wound by burning it and that's that scene in itself is pretty tough to watch as well um, the ending fight scene is fantastic as well um, those are the three scenes the, <laughs> the beginning the bear scene and the ending uh, just brilliant it's really bloody really raw and just great stuff there's also a great scene where he <laughs> he falls off a mountainside riding a horse and kind of like um, uh, when Han opens up the Tauntaun for uh, Luke Skywalker to sleep in in the Hoth um, Leo cuts open the, the horse and he uh, gets inside so he can get warm and uh, so that scene was pretty badass as well. Um, yeah, so many great moments. Fantastic cast. Uh, Tom Hardy was excellent as well. Um, just re really a great character, Fitzgerald. Um, the way he talks and the, the way his hair, because he actually got scalped uh, by by a by one of the Rees, um the the bad Native Americans that are chasing. Them. So yeah, sorry about that. My uh, memory card is only good for like six minutes at a time. It's really frustrating trying to shoot this video uh, in these segments like this. Um, so anyway, yeah, The Revenant, I absolutely loved it. It's my favorite film of uh, 2015 that I've seen so far. Um, I was dying to see it and I, went, and I was really happy I went to see the IMAX show 
just a spectacular movie. Um, Leo, fantastic. Tom Hardy, great. Uh, if, if you're into those type of films, uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, I gave The Revenant a 10 out of 10. So, uh, yeah, those are the six films uh, I watched this week. Um, I did watch something last night, uh, but I'm going to save that for next week's video because uh, I wanted to end uh, end the week on The Revenant uh, because that was the big movie I saw this week. So, yeah, thank you for watching as always, and until next time, I'll see ya. Bye.